Hi, and welcome back to this series. The application we're building is taking shape, doesn't look too shabby, and we now have a frontend that can interact with all our backend API endpoints we built with GraphQL. But one problem we're facing thus far is the performance. If I reload this page, fetching these events here is okay-ish uh, regarding the speed, but we still will have the problem here that we have a lot of unnecessary round trips. Don't know why? Well, we'll take a look at the reason and then also at the remedy in this video. So this is the app we built and when I'm fetching all my events, what in the end happens, if we have a look at our GraphQL schema, is that this events query here gets executed. Now this returns us an array of events, nice. The problem with that just is, an event, if we have a look at its definition, also has a creator field. The creator field in turn gives us a user. And now if we have a look at our resolver, we see that for events, we solve that problem by, we have a look at transform event where the magic happens, by simply executing this user function, which happens to be this function, which makes another database request. The problem with this request just is, it's made on every event we're returning. So if we are returning one event, and we also want to get the name of the creator of that event, so of the user who created the event, then we have two requests, right? One request to get that event, or all events actually, and we only have one, let's say, and then one extra request for that one event we found to get its user data. Now the problem is if we have two events in our database, then we make one request to get both events, and then for every event, we make an extra request to get its user data. So now we have three requests instead of just two. And that problem becomes worse and worse the deeper we drill into our data structure. So if we then for that user also want to have the user's events or anything like that, or the more events and so on we have in the database. This is certainly not something we can leave like this because it's not scalable, it's not a solution you would want in a production-ready application. Now, a tool that can help us with that is Data Loader. If you Google for Data Loader, you should find this GitHub repository on Facebook's uh, GitHub account, basically. And uh, this is a tool that helps you with um, batching your requests. So here you find detailed instructions in case you want to dive deeper. In the end, it's a NPM library we can install where we can define certain queries and then the data loader will detect when we make a query that, um, well, fits one of our predefined queries, so to say, and it will then look if it already made that request in the past and will take the response from there or otherwise make the request here but automatically batch it with all requests that need the same query. So a concrete example would be that we set up a batch query for the user where we are able to accept multiple user IDs and then we return all users that match these IDs. And with such a batching function set up, we can request individual users and data loader will group them before making one request and therefore it reduces the amount of requests made. So to make this work, I will install data loader here with the command you also see here on the GitHub repository. And for that, I quit my um, server, my uh, backend server, not the one serving the React app. Thereafter, we can restart it. Now this is installed and now we can start implementing data loader. And I will implement it here in my merge JS file, which is in the end where I have all the logic for uh, drilling deeper into my, um, into my resolved uh, data, so to say, so into my models. Which kind of data loaders do we need? Well, we certainly need one for events and uh, one for users and then probably also one for bookings. But let's start with the events one. For that, I'll create a new constant and I'll name it event loader. The name is up to you though. And I want to use the data loader package. For this, we need to import it. And I'll store it in a constant named data lo loader. And we import it by requiring data loader, just as you import any libraries into a Node.js application. And here I will create a new data loader object. And this now takes a function, a batching function that it can execute for all kinds of, in this case, events. 
So here I want to um, add a function that is able to, to handle the different requests I might have in my application. And now in this application, I need to be able to get a list of events and a single event. And therefore here, I will get my event IDs, let's say as an input. Now, in here, I want to execute a function that can give me these event IDs. And I will return the result of that function. So here I will actually execute events. So this function, which does just that, it takes an array of event IDs and then returns me the events it founds with that ID. So here event IDs is what I pass on to the events function because that is what this function requires. So now that is our first simple data loader, which is capable of loading our events. And we can pass in any IDs, also just one ID if we want to, and it will fetch it, but not immediately. Instead, in one tick of our node event loop on the back end, it will gather all requests it finds that want to get one or multiple uh, events identified by their IDs, and it will then uh, group them together. Now, where do we want to use that event loader? Well, in the events resolver, we are fetching all events, and I'll actually leave this like this, because the data loader works when it receives keys uh, for data we want to fetch, so be that an ID or a first name, but it needs some identifier, otherwise it can't tell whether it already fetched that data and should use that or make a new request, basically. And it can't merge the requests together into one big one. So I'll leave this here at event find, but I can use my event loader here when I'm fetching a single event, for example. Instead of awaiting for event find by ID, I can use the event loader and there we now have a load method I can call. And to load, I can pass that ID, that event ID, just like that. And event loader will do, or data loader will do the rest, will basically register this single event ID, then see if in the same tick of the node.js event loop, other requests to event loader with different IDs, be that one or multiple ones are sent, and it will then merge all these IDs together, send the request to the database uh, with the logic we defined here, so by calling this um, events function in our case here, and then the results that are returned are basically split up by event loader again, so that it knows, okay, you wanted that single ID, here's your chunk, you wanted these three IDs, here's your chunk. That is how it works, and that is why it makes sense to use it for a single event. Now, for user, where I also um, call events here and bind my uh, bind this method to um, basically use my user doc created events, which is an array of IDs, there we can also use event loader load and bind this function now so that this function now receives a user doc created events. Now in transform event there, um, we can later do the same for the user with the user loader. Right now I don't need it. For booking where I get an event, well there I do already use single event, this function from up there, and there I already use the event loader. So indirectly I use the event loader here already. And therefore if I now save this in our application, all events are still fetched like this. If I have a look at my bookings. And for that, let me quickly book an event here. Then I do actually get an error here that I cannot read property date of undefined. The reason for that is that my event loader uses this events function where I already return um, a transformed event. So all the events I fetch are already transformed. And in transform event, I do already uh, adjust the date and so on. The problem is in my bookings, when I fetch these bookings, I call transform booking on that and there I call single event for every event I'm fetching. And now if you have a look at that single event function, I transform this again. Now the way we restructured our logic, single event always uses event loader, which in turn always will use events function, which already transforms all events. So which basically adjusts them as we need it already. Hence here, there is no need to transform it again and we can just return it like that. And if we do this, if in single event we return just the event, now if we reload and log back in and go to the bookings page, 
we do get our booking again. Now let's also add a user loader, also to practice this. So here I'll add my user loader, a new data loader that is. And just as before, the data loader always needs an array of identifiers because it will then merge all identifiers together, make a batch request that split the result up, so to say. So here I expect to get my user IDs. And now the function I want to execute there. Well, previously we had events. Here we have no users function. I only have a function for a single user. Now it turns out in this app, I never needed to fetch more than one user, but now we do. That's the idea behind batching. Because if we retrieve multiple events and for every event we want to have the creator, then now we actually want to merge this together into one request to the user database, which fetches users for all IDs of all the users of the events we're trying to access. And that is exactly what Data Loader will do for us. So therefore here, I will define my own logic um, where I return user, and this is my user model, find, and I want to find all users where the ID is in, and that's the same logic as with events here, is in my user IDs array here. And uh, that automatically returns a promise, which is exactly what data loader needs. We need to return a promise here. User find returns such a promise with our array of users. Now we have the user loader and in places where I need it, for example, here in transform event, I can now call user loader load and bind this so that the event creator, which is the ID of the user that created that event is passed into the load function here when this is called, which in turn happens when we request uh, that extra creator data. For um, bookings, it's the same. Here, instead of accessing my user function here, I instead want to use my user loader. But actually, now that I think about this, let me reverse this here for transform event. I will use this user function we used before. So the exact same code I used before. And also for booking here, I'll stick to user bind. So I'll stick to this function. And in this function here, I now want to use my uh, user loader simply because here I then uh, do the additional setup to uh, link to my created events and so on and don't want to rewrite that code. We would have to rewrite it here in our user loader otherwise. I'll not do this. So instead here I'll simply call user loader load for that given user ID. Now the effect of that should be that if I save this, uh, let's have a look at our uh, front end events page here, events.js in the pages folder. The function where I fetch all events, which is this one here, there I do get my creator ID and email. And this should now not lead to duplicate requests anymore. Uh, instead, it fails. So let's quickly have a look at the error. Data loader must be constructed with a function. The function did not return of the same length. So we're essentially returning wrong data here in the user loader. We're not returning um, the array of data it expected. And that can actually be a hard error to debug. It gets easier if we dump a console log into our user loader up there and log the user IDs we're getting. If we do that and we reload our page with the events, which fails, we see that we get an array with these uh, data fields. Now we're trying to fetch five different users, but if we look closer, we see that all but one have the same ID. Now normally, data loader should intelligently merge this together. It should not try to make, uh, to basically get five different data pieces here if four of them are for the same key. The problem, and that is really hard to spot, is here when we use user loader load, I pass in my user ID, which I get here, and in turn, the user ID I'm getting here in the user function, for example, comes from transform event here. I do pass in my event creator here, and that is an ID. But what is an ID in MongoDB? It's not a string. It's this object ID thing instead. And it is an object, therefore. In JavaScript, objects are not primitives. So the check data loader performs where it checks if a given key is already included in the array of keys it constructed will fail here because 
two objects, even if they hold the same value, are not equal in JavaScript. That can be tricky to wrap your head around, but that is how JavaScript works. And therefore, in the end, all these IDs are treated separately because they aren't just strings, they are objects here, even though we don't see that here. So the fix is simple. In the user function, where we call user loader load, we should call to string here. So to convert this object user ID, this object ID thing here to a string. And thereafter, this will work. Now, by the way, it of course is the same for the event loader. Otherwise, we'll have the same inefficiency here. So event loader load to string. With that fixed, now if we save that, if we reload events now, we're fetching all events. And this will now make fewer requests because it will not fetch the user for every single event here and make an extra request. Instead, data loader intelligently merges this together on the back end and then makes one combined request to the user's collection, gets all the user IDs, and then returns them back to the functions that originally wanted them, which were our event uh, object resolvers in the end. And there we therefore didn't have the user data, but one combined request was sent. Now, last but not least, let's uh, also see in our schema what else makes sense. Uh, for a user, we got no nested data here, uh, or we got the, the events actually, but we already handled this with the event loader. For an event, we got the creator, which we're handling with the user loader. And we need no booking loader because in this API, I have no other data where I would get the related bookings. I only get related events and users. And that is handled with these two loaders. So wrapping your head around data loader can be complex. In the end, it's a batching mechanism. It makes sure that multiple requests are batched together, database requests, I mean, are batched or are merged together so that one bigger request is sent for all the keys you needed and then this is returned and this is then split up back uh, such that your app and the different parts of your app that requested the different keys get their data. This magic, so to say, is done by data loader and it speeds up our API and simply prevents duplicate requests. And uh, therefore, indeed, if we log in, this is now actually faster because of um, our improved setup here. The rest, of course, still works as before.